Come on, let's grab our Bibles and get into this word. We're going to make our confession. We're going to make our confession. Get your phone, turn your phone to the Bible, get off, you know, Facebook, come on and turn. Go to the Bible app. Come on, lift it up, whether you got your paper Bible. There's some paper, I see some paper Bibles in here, my God. I think I see a coffee table Bible back there, that's it right there, come on. Come on, say it with me, this is my Bible. It is God's Word. It reveals to me God's will. Therefore, it's the final authority to which I submit. To settle all the issues of my life. It's the, it's the standard of my conduct and the basis of all my expectation. Shout it out, I am what it says I am. I possess what it says I possess. And I can do absolutely everything it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer. Not just, Not just a hero. And my life, and my, life my everyday life, my everyday life is, the is the better after having heard, after having heard the, word the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing, comes by hearing. And, hearing. And, hearing. and hearing and hearing by, and hearing by. The, word the word of God. Let's rise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 17. Amen. Matthew chapter 17. And... Uh, I got the girl don't put it out there. Bishop has sent this word, right? And she told me verbatim. She said, she said, PT, I'm just, I feel some type of way that I can't come in here and preach it. Because this thing is burning in her so strongly. As I'm talking to her, she's talking to me over the phone. I can just hear it in her voice. And so she has sent this word for us today, and we want to, we want to uh, get right into it. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Mm -hmm. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Yeah, hear ye him. Listen, today we want to talk to you from the subject, alignment for the assignment. Alignment for the assignment. Each year. As a church, we have a theme, Amen. we have a focus, we have a direction that we move towards spiritually. Amen. In the middle of last year, God gave our bishop the theme for this year, and that theme is the voice. Yes. We are seeking to grow deeper in our relationship with Christ as we focus on hearing his voice. Amen. The Bible says in Col Colossians chapter 1, it reminds us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. In other words, Jesus is the voice. Amen. Yeah, Jesus is the voice. In Matthew chapter 17, God interrupts Peter in verse 5. And the Bible says that while he was speaking, a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. I know there are a lot of other voices going around, but I need you to hear him. Amen. I know there are a lot of people with an opinion, but I need you to hear him. Him, yeah. We, we will learn to hear and to recognize his voice through his words, through his works, and through his ways. The way we will learn Jesus' voice, learn his voice is through his words, his works, and through his ways. Today we are beginning in this series because we will start looking at Jesus' words. Yeah, his first statements in two different Gospels. The first statement is in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And the other statement we will look at is in Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. And as Pastor was studying the words of Jesus, she could not separate these two statements. One is the first statement in the book of Luke made by Jesus. The other is the first statement made in the book of Matthew. And although they could be preached separately, she said, Trev, I could not separate the two. Reason being is because the, these initial statements of Jesus reveal two things. It reveals his outward intentionality and his inward alignment. These two statements that we're going to look at today reveal his outward intentionality and also his inward alignment. Let's take a look at the first statement in Luke chapter 2. 
Luke chapter 2. Here in Luke chapter 2 is the first statement of Jesus. And let me tell you what's going on. Here in Luke chapter 2, Jesus and his parents go up to Jerusalem for the annual feast of the Passover. Uh, at the time of our text, Jesus is 12 years old. Although we consider a 12-year-old a child, the age of 12 was regarded as the age of discernment. Now, I know some of you all with 12-year-olds don't even want to believe that. But understand, according to the word, in the Bible day, the age of 12 years old was an age of discernment. Uh, and when they had finished their time at the feast, Mary and Joseph and the caravan that came with them headed back home. But the Bible said that Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. After traveling a few days, they realized that Jesus was not with them. But supposing that he was somewhere in the company, they kept going. Now, I can't get hung up here, but I, just, I need to just pause parenthetically for a moment here and say, if you ever get to a place in your life where you're not sure where Jesus is, I need you to stop. You start walking this life and you're not sensing him and you don't, some, some things don't have gotten off. I don't need you to do what they did in the text. The Bible says that they assumed that he was somewhere in the company. If you and I ever get off, we need to stop to make sure we figure out where Jesus is. So the Bible said they kept going and they got on to where they were and realized he wasn't there. And then they turned back to come back to Jerusalem and they are frantic because they can't find him. Now, I'm looking for a mom in here who have ever, you can't raise your hand because we got some social workers in here, but if you've got some mothers in here, <laughs> if you've ever, for a moment, lost your child, didn't know where they were for a moment, you already know where Mary is in the text. Mary and Joseph, man, I submit to you, might not be in the same place. Joseph might be a little calm, but Mary is high strong. Joseph, I need you to understand something. I don't know where my baby is. Joseph, I need you to find my baby. <laughs> Somebody say, poor Joseph. <laughs> so Joseph and them tear the caravan around, and they go back to Jerusalem, and they're searching for Jesus. And the Bible said that he spent one day searching. They couldn't find him, and finally they went to the temple. And the Bible says they go back to the temple, and uh, they walk in the temple, and Mary kind of goes off a little bit. They find him in the temple. His mother says, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And look at Jesus' reply. His first words that he ever makes in the book of Luke. He says, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now... I don't need us to take this culturally. Because if my mama had been looking for me and I come out my mouth with something like that. <laughs> my God. She looks sweetly saved over there right now, but understand. But Mary doesn't go off like many of us would go off. And can I just submit to you? Because early, if you read back in chapter 2, there were some things that went on where she pondered some things in her heart because there was a man of God by the name of Simeon and a woman of God by the name of Anna has spoke some things about Jesus and the Bible said that Mary pondered those things in her heart. So she understood that this child of mine has an assignment on his life. Parents, can I just pause for a second and say God has given you an indication and a reader to know that your child has a certain assignment on their lives. No, you may not know the whole Bible, but God has given you a knowing to know that there's an assignment on their lives. And so Mary doesn't trip. Even at this age, Jesus comes into an awareness of his assignment. And with this awareness, there's an intentionality that he has about living his life based on the purpose and to glorify, on the purpose of God and to glorify God. We learned this week in the Purpose Driven Life that we were created for God's purpose. And we were created to glorify God. And Jesus has an, un an understanding of this. We even saw it in this week's devotional in the Purpose Driven Life. And God tell and Jesus, make, make note of this. That when Jesus was aware of what it is he was going to do, he has a seriousness about it. He has an outward intentionality toward his assignment that is seen in two things. 
it is seen in his investment and in his investigation. Mm. Look at it. In his investment. In verse 46, the Bible says that they found him in the temple. When they were looking for him, he was found investing his time in the temple in an exchange for an understanding of his father's business. Ah, He's investing his time with seemingly like-minded others. When you and I find out what it is that we're supposed to do, we need to be intentional about investing our time. Now I'm not now he's in this temple and I he's in the temple of God and he's in church. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to say that we should always be in church, but as a believer, we should spend some time in church. But more importantly, look at how what the business he says he is he's in matches the time that he's spending. He says he's about his father's business, but where he's investing his time matches what it is that he says. Hmm. Question, where you invest your time, does it match your desires? Come on, now, I'm not trying to meddle, I'm just asking a question. Where, where you invest your time, does it match your vision board? Oh, God. And where, where you invest your time, does it match your confession? Jesus said, I'm supposed to be about my father's business, and where he invested his time matched what he said. Jesus invests his time to match his pursuit. I must be about my father's business. Not only did he make the investment, but he also investigated. The Bible says that they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening and asking them questions. His intentionality about his father's business was seen in his investigation. He was not standing up trying to teach other people at this time. His willingness to humble himself, to listen and to ask questions, position him to learn. Sometimes we miss our opportunities to gain insight from what others have because we're not willing to humble ourselves to learn. Understand something, when you and I get the opportunity to sit with someone who is knowledgeable in a field, that is an opportunity to investigate, not, in, not to impress. When you and I get an opportunity to sit in front of somebody who's an expert in their field, or maybe they're more knowledgeable than we are in the, in the field that we're in, that is an opportunity for us to investigate, not to impress them. Have you ever seen somebody get in, this, in the room with somebody else? And they are in a room with somebody, at a table with somebody who can pour some knowledge into them. But they start talking so much. Woo, they start talking so much. And if you know anything about a real mentor, a real mentor will, will, will be quiet. They will shut their mouths and they will let that person keep talking. But one of the things I learned from Bishop is that you and I, when we get into places and spaces like this, that is not the time to impress. That is the time for us to open up and investigate the mind of the person we're sitting across from. Jesus, the Son of God, humbles himself. And he starts to ask questions of these people. And listen, let me give you a little note. When we talk about investigating and asking questions, you should put together some questions that make sense. If you have an opportunity to sit in front of somebody who is an expert in their field, at least take the time to think through some beneficial questions. Let me give you some help. The type of questions you should ask should be open-ended questions, insightful questions, and clarifying questions. Yeah, open-ended questions. Ask questions that encourage detailed responses rather than simple yes or no answers. For example, how do you approach challenges within your field? You'll get this later. You go back again. Go back and get this later. Number two, ask an insightful question. These are questions that allow the expert to draw on their personal experiences. A question like, what common misconceptions do people have about this field? Thirdly, your question should be clarifying questions. You ask them, hey, could you elaborate on that point that you just made about X, Y, and Z? Because when you and I get in front of an expert, you and I want to prepare by asking investigative type of questions that will leave us better than they found us. 
This is what Jesus did. He's investigating. Don't miss the power of humbling yourself to investigate. Look at the transition from verse 46 to 47. In verse 46, it says that Jesus is there. He's listening and he's asking. He's listening and he's asking. But then in verse 47, it says he's understanding and he's answering. In verse 46, he's listening and he's asking. In verse 47, he's understanding and he's answering. What are you trying to say, Pastor Trev? Listening and asking leads to understanding and answers. When you and I humble ourselves to listening and asking, then it will lead us to understanding and answering. Jesus was so intentional about his assignment. That he didn't try to impress them. He invested his time into the house of God because it matched where it is he said he was about. And then he took the time to investigate the minds of like-minded others. He was intentional. You and I, whatever it is God has told us to do. I don't care what God has told you to do. Maybe he's told you to own a business. Maybe you're supposed to be a model. Maybe you're supposed to be a basketball player. Maybe you're supposed to be a therapist or a counselor. Whatever God, whatever, whenever you come into the knowledge and the understanding that this is what God has asked of you to do, you need to be intentional. You need to be intentional. Catch this. I don't care how old you are. Now, I know some of you can't clap on that, but yesterday we had an 81-year-old woman go down in the water to be baptized. At whatever age you realize, whatever age you realize, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Let me invest my time and let me investigate what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And if you can't get anybody, I hear you, Pastor Shondell, don't wait around for people. Oh, I hear you, Bishop. You and I have this thing called YouTube University. There's no application fee. There's no tuition. You can literally get online and figure out, at least get started on whatever it is you believe God has assigned for you to do. Whatever God has told you to do, you got you to gotta be intentional about it. But not only are we to be intentional, he's about his father's business, but Bishop could not shake Matthew chapter 3. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. We want to take a look at Jesus' first words in Matthew chapter 3 as he is talking to John the Baptist now. Although Jesus was aware of his ministry causing him to be intentional, and that intentionality was seen in how he invested his time and how he investigated the minds of those around him, he also understood that his personal alignment was vital to his ministry. His outward intentionality was important, but his personal alignment was vital to his ministry. In Matthew chapter 3, we're here with John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He's the one that God sent to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. He came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was John the Baptist who said, I indeed baptized with water unto repentance, but he was coming after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to even carry. He's going to come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Verse 13, Jesus comes from Galilee down to the Jordan River where John is baptizing. And John looks up and sees Jesus coming and Jesus wants to be baptized. And John said, ho, ho, ho. Oh, I can't, I don't want to mess up the scripture, but can I just urbanize it for a little bit? Hold on, player. <laughs> you, 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 you can't, you can't, we can't do this. We can't do this. I don't need to be baptizing you. You need to be baptizing me. You are the one I've been sent to pave the way for you. I sh- I, you should be baptizing me and catch Jesus' first words. In the gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, Jesus says to him, 
permit it to be so. Now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Some of y'all say, wait a minute, that King James be taking me down. Let me give it to you another translation. It said, it should, John says, it should be done. Jesus said, this should be done. I know how you feel, John, but this should be done. For we must carry out all that God has required of us. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, not only do I want to do what the law requires, but I personally want to be in alignment with God. Yeah. I want to make sure that I'm doing, that I'm the first partaker of this. I want to make sure that I'm doing what it is that I'm going to tell others they need to do. I don't want to be great at telling everybody else what to do. I don't want to be great at telling everybody else what to do. I want to make sure that personally I'm in alignment. <laughs> to see this as a preacher. As a preacher. That God has called me to be a preacher. That's what he's called me to do, to share his word. What an humbling opportunity. And so with that, there is some outward intentionality Amen. that I should invest my time. Go back to school, invest my time. I should be around other preachers and, and go around and just dig into their mind and figure out some things and ask them probing questions. I should learn how I should stand Amen. and how I hold my hands and how I should inflect my voice and how to carry myself. I need to do those kinds of things. That's the outward intentionality. Amen. But you, I cannot miss Amen. or just get focused on the outward intentionality and ignore the personal alignment. I don't want to just preach on forgiveness. I want to actually walk in forgiveness. I, I don't want to just be someone who's a good teacher on giving. I want to be a cheerful giver myself. I, I, don't want, I, don't want to be, I don't want to show you verses on being a good father. I want to leave here and go home and actually be a good father. I don't want to just want to, I don't want to just want to honor my wife in front of you all. I tried to dress like her today. But Montez, it has to be more than that. It has to be more than just outward things that I'm going after. I need to have a personal alignment. Jesus clearly understood that your personal alignment with God's word is vital to your assignment. Someone said, my, somebody said, my personal alignment is vital to my assignment. Now, when I talk about personal alignment, let me, let me clear this up. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not talking about being perfect because none of us in here are perfect. But what I'm talking about is a pursuit toward the things of God. I'm talking about going after the things of God. That when I do mess up, I don't just wallow in it, but I get up and I find the scripture on what it is I need to do and I get back in line. Somebody said pursue. Pursue. Now, as I'm pursuing, Dr. Green, I need to make sure that I should have a certain level of alignment in my life before I start telling you some stuff. I already said we ain't got to be perfect. But, I, but, but if I'm around here sleeping with everything that walk. They ain't going to help me in here today. Boy, it got quiet. Come on. If you, now, I'm, not, I'm not knocking you. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, Trev, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Mm -mm, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> so if you, go, if you got some stuff that you got going on, I understand. I'm not knocking you. But what I'm telling you is what you want to do, repent. Amen. Repent. Get in front of God. Repent. After you repent, then go talk to an elder. Or a mother. Amen. For the ladies, go find a mother and talk to that mother. Uh-huh. Then get some scriptures on how God sees you so you can transform your mind Amen. and begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Yeah. 
Then, oh, this is the last one right here. Then get some accountability. Because that will help you to get yourself personally aligned. Why? Because my personal pursuit of alignment is key to my assignment. Hmm. We're about to be done. But look at verse 17. In verse 17, look at what happens after Jesus pursues his personal alignment. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, it says, And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. What are you saying, Pastor Trev? Our outward intentionality is important, and we need to make sure that we're investing and investigating. But there was no voice until he aligned himself personally. There was no voice from heaven until he aligned himself personally. Can I tell you something? God will bless your efforts as you align yourself personally. I was talking to somebody this week, and they had to make some challenging decisions inside of their business. And I was saying, they, I was listening to them on what it is that they were saying. And it was tough. But they realized in order for the hand of God to remain on what it is that we're doing, we cannot just be outwardly aligned. But I need to make sure that I'm personally aligned with God's word. Why? Because the blessing of God rests on my personal alignment. You and I cannot get so carried away with outward intentionality that we ignore our personal alignment. I remember Pastor Dr. Dr. Alicia Britt Scholey, she teaches it this way, that you and I, when we get the word of God, we don't want to just take the word of God. Let's say it was like a water hose. We don't want to just take the word of God as a water hose and spray it on everybody else. I don't want to just spray it on everybody else. I want to take that same hose and point it down on me so that I am personally aligned with what it is God wants for my life, and then I'm going to shoot some on you. Shooting some on you is my assignment, but I cannot ignore my personal responsibility to make sure that I turn the hose on myself. Jesus' first words of his public ministry were in one chapter over. Jesus steps out in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, and says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But Bishop posed a statement to me, or rather a question. She said, Do you think he would have been able to stand and yell, Repent, in chapter 4, if he did not take the time to personally align himself with God in chapter 3? She said, our personal alignment gives volume to his voice. Our personal alignment with what God is telling us to do, it gives volume to his voice. I remember coming up in church, and there used to be a mother. That's why I remember these old songs, and mothers would sing these powerful old songs. They didn't have four and five rehearsals. Come on, they didn't have four or five rehearsals. Ain't nothing wrong with rehearsal. We ought to rehearse. We need to rehearse. But it was something about mother had a personal alignment where she would get down in her prayer closet and talk to God in such a way that by the time she opened her mouth to talk about trusting in the Lord, the Spirit of God would move. I'm not saying outward intentionality is not important. It is important, but you and I cannot sacrifice personal alignment. Because it is our personal alignment that gives volume to to the assignment that he's given us. When you and I take the time to get in his word. When you and I take the time that when Holy Spirit brings something up to us that we need to forgive a person and we go and forgive them, that gives volume to his voice. 
personal alignment gave volume to his voice. I'm about to be done. But Bishop brought up this statement, and I, I can't close it without making this statement. We talked about the title to this sermon, and I went with alignment for the assignment. But Bishop sent me a text. I said, well, what would you have named it? She said, I would have called it the message before the sermon. I had to text her back, doc, because I didn't get it. I, y'all shaking y'all head like y'all, y'all anointed. <laughs> y'all anointed. I texted her back. I said, Bishop, what, is, what are you saying? She said, before he stepped out to preach a sermon in chapter 4, there was a personal message that he had in chapter 3. That before you and I ever step out with our public sermon, we need to make sure that we adhere to the private message. And when we do, we align ourselves for whatever the assignment he's given us. I want to close with this statement. Whatever assignment God has for you, whether it's teaching, running a business, raising children, going to school, leading others, serving in a ministry, helping others, leading a life group, be intentional about it. Go after it. You already know what God has told you to do. Go after it. Don't spend another watch night talking about what you're getting ready to do. Go after it. Invest your time. Investigate it. But be sure to have the personal alignment with God and his word because our personal alignment with him helps us to carry out the assignment that we receive from him. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, believers are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to gather around your word. Father, we thank you because as we are studying your your words, your literal words, Lord, your words are showing us how to live our lives. Lord, we realize that you have given all of us an assignment. You've given us all of us something to do. Lord, may we honor your assignment with our own personal intentionality. Lord, may we invest the time in going after what it is you put in our hearts to do. Lord, may we investigate, ask questions, search out information so that we can equip ourselves to be all that you've called us to be. But Lord, help us not to forget the personal alignment with your word. For Father, that is what gives volume to the voice. Father, that is what causes us to be effective. I hear your word, Lord, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Father, we thank you now. And Lord, whatever areas we need to make adjustments, Lord, help us to make the adjustments. Lord, we realize you're not calling for perfection, you're calling for a pursuit. So, Lord, we're not sitting around trying to get, become perfect before we step out and do what you call us to do. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that helps us along the way. But Lord, if there's an area that you have lifted up to us, Lord, help us to be intentional about bringing that area into alignment. Because we want to please you, not just outwardly, but inwardly as well. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.